Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review and this is the Tin Hi-Fi T5. This is, well, I guess if you're not new to this channel, you will have been pretty familiar with Tin Hi-Fi. Um, in fact, my first IM I ever reviewed was the Tin Hi-Fi T2 and this is the latest in that same line. The Tin T5, it's just come out recently and kind of as the tin line has been doing, the price on this has gone up a little bit. It's about 130 bucks, which still kind of keeps it in the entry level space, uh, but definitely puts it up against some pretty tough competition. And basically what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks is I've been living with and listening to the Tin Hi-Fi T5 and comparing it to not just other IMs in the T line, uh, but also comparing it to some of my favorites in this price round, this price range around 100 to 129 bucks. Um, it is also available kind of initially launched with an early bird price of 110 bucks. And as of this recording, I think for a couple of hours extra, uh, it is still available on drop if you're interested in checking it out for $110. Uh, there's a link in the description down below if you're interested in that, but maybe you'll wanna wait for the full review, which we're gonna get into in just a bit. Like my other reviews, this is a live stream. So if you've got any questions, you want me to clarify anything about the T5, drop it in the live chat. And at the end of the review, I'll have a little back and forth conversation and hopefully you'll walk away knowing everything that you need to know about this IEM. But for now, let's go to the table and talk about the build of the 10 Hi-Fi T5, which I've got laid out here with all of its accessories and accoutrement that it comes with. Um, which I guess we can go over real quickly. What you get inside the box is this. Uh, you do get, of course, a fairly substantial selection of tips, which is nice to see. You get the sort of classic tin hi-fi foam tips, which I didn't use, but you know, some folks are into these things. I don't know how I feel about the white tips. Uh, I think they look really cool, but probably likely to get dirty and stuffing something in your ear. That's, I don't know. It's an interesting choice, but then you've also got a couple of different flavors of silicone tips. Let me pull over a couple here so you can take a look. Um, they do have a slightly different bore size. It's got the narrow bore ones here and the wider bore. The wider bore, kind of curiously or interestingly, I didn't notice this when I unboxed it, but I noticed it when I was using them. They've almost got like this spin fit style neck to them that does allow them to rotate freely and I guess ostensibly give you a slightly better fit. Um, these are the tips that I ended up using primarily were the, the wider bore with the spin fit style uh, nozzle and you can just kind of see the way that they rotate on here. Very, very like spin fits, which I think is kind of cool. Um, apart from that, I guess you get a pair of tweezers, you get a brush for cleaning, and then you also get a set of filters, filter replacements, which is actually kind of interesting. Uh, they are the exact same filters that you see on the buds shells themselves. Um, just kind of your typical shower head filter. So I guess if this thing gets gunked up, ostensibly I could remove that and replace it, but I didn't try just to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but yeah, I guess it's nice to have that in the box. Also in the box is this case, which in my opinion is just way too large. I mean, it's a pretty nicely ma made case. It's got a magnetic closure on it, which is nice to see. And if you open it up and look inside, you do have this kind of soft touch layer or whatever but yeah i don't know i find this thing to be honestly just much larger than i would ever use and i think also just kind of similar issues that i had with the white ear tips is this white texture this white material i feel like is gonna get dirty or it's gonna show dirt a lot sooner than something else might so i'm not in love with this but i mean it is well made and certainly aesthetically it's pretty handsome if that's what you're into so those are the accessories. Let's talk about the earphone itself. Um, and we'll talk about, well, let's start with this cable, which 10 Hi-Fi has kind of been known for uh, including, especially since the T3, they've been known for including pretty nice cables with their IMs. And this cable I would say is, is decent, but maybe a, kind of a step down from some of their other cables, if I'm perfectly honest. It's a little on the thin and wiry side, but as you can see behavior wise, like it lies flat. Um, I'll give it a little bit of a, a roadie wrap for you folks so you can see how well it lies. Um, yeah, it's generally pretty well behaved, but I did find because it's a little bit thin uh, and the hooks on this thing, maybe just because the uh, the earpiece is kind of 
overpower the weight of the cable itself, I did find it to you know tangle up a little bit more than usual. So there is the cable, pretty nice cable. You do also have a chin cinch on this cable, actually a pretty handsome little Y split as well. Um, but the chin cinch, you know, it's kind of like a lot of other chin cinches where it kind of slides itself, doesn't have enough friction to really be that useful in my opinion. Um, but aesthetically, I guess it's nice enough. Uh, interestingly, up here at the, the top of the cable, this is actually a two pin connector, which is pretty unique for Tin Hi-Fi. They've been known for sticking with uh, their, um, their MMCX. And it is actually a pretty nice two pin because it's actually, you know, you can see it's a little recessed there, which gives it a little extra reinforcement and stability. So that much I appreciate. And I guess that will lead us into talking about the ear pieces themselves, which I think are pretty interestingly, interestingly, interesting looking. Um, Tin Hi-Fi's look had for a long time been pretty much the same. And you'll see when I pull out the T4 in a little bit, they used to just always give you these, you know, really pretty simple cylinders. And then with the T2 Plus, they kind of went with a slight, a pretty different change, pretty different departure. And then here with the T5, you get a pretty radical departure, honestly. The shape of this thing is a little bit alien looking. Uh, it does, you know, I guess kind of look like an alien header, right? But frankly, I think these things are pretty well made. Uh, they are all metal shells. Let's see if we can give it a clink test. So all metal shells, uh, I don't know if this is painted or polished. It does kind of look like it's some sort of a paint on the exterior. Uh, and then you can see the Tin Hi-Fi logo just very faintly etched into there. It's pretty low key, pretty tasteful, but I don't know, for the most part, I actually quite like the look of it. Let me throw out my ears and we'll talk about how these things fit, which for me is generally pretty good. Um, I did mention that Tin Hi-Fi was kind of known for their more standard cil cylinder style fitting IMs, a T2, T2 Plus, or T2 Pro, T3, and T4 all had that style. And a common issue that people have with that style is nice and small, but it wasn't very secure fitting. And you don't get that problem here at all with the T5s. These I find super, super secure fitting. So, you know, it fits inside my ear well. Um, maybe it didn't quite fit as well on my left side as it does on my right side. And that's not because the ear pieces are not symmetrical, it's because I am not symmetrical. Um, but generally I actually found comfort in these things pretty outstanding, if I'm perfectly honest. As you can see here on the pieces, there are no sharp edges or anything of the sort. The inside of the earpiece is slightly contoured for the shape of an ear, not overly aggressive, so unlikely to cause uh, a lot of pressure points or anything like that, but it's contoured enough that I think it locks in there and fits pretty well. So that is, the build, the aesthetic of this headphone, this earphone. I think it's pretty well done, to be honest. Again, the cable is, I think, not quite as nice as some of the other cables that Tin Hi-Fi has come out with, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's actually not a bad cable at all. So nice cable, nice earpieces, decent accessory collection, but how does this thing sound? So. Like I typically do, I'm gonna start by just giving you an overview of the sound signature here on the Tin Hi-Fi T5. And maybe worth stepping back and talking a little bit about what the T series has kind of been known for. Um, the original Tin Hi-Fi T2 is kind of like a, a neutral tuned IM with a fairly warm mid-range, not a lot of bass, uh, and a little bit bright in the treble. The T2 Pro took that treble a little too far. Most people didn't like that. And then with the T3, it was maybe a, a balancing between them. The Tin T4 was actually a little bit of a departure for the T series in that it went away from that kind of like light bass neutral tune toward more of a traditional, I don't know, it gave it a little bit of bass emphasis, but it's still an upper mid range kind of vocal forward IM. The Tin T5, however, it's kind of taking that that same direction of the T4 a little bit further. And I, I don't know, well, maybe a little bit too far. So the general tuning here I would describe is kind of surprisingly a, a pretty aggressive bright V tune, which is to say that there's, you know, quite a bit of treble emphasis, especially in the lower treble. 
Uh, and also, frankly, quite a bit of bass, which is interesting because again, the T-Line was not necessarily known for being a bassy set of earphones, although the T4 uh, and then eventually the T2 Plus kind of changed that direction. Here, I think this is probably the bassiest tin hi-fi that I've heard. But it's interesting that because you have that fairly, um, fairly bright treble uh, and still fairly strong upper mid-range forwardness, it doesn't come across as an overly warm or thick sounding earphone, despite that fairly heavy bass emphasis. Um, you know, there's a lot of bass quantity there, but I don't find that it comes, it doesn't dominate it tonally, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, I guess, depending on what you want. My take is that they were trying to essentially have their cake and eat it too, which is to say, I think the T series, right? The T2, people really liked that neutral, somewhat bright tune uh, with really strong vocals, but people complained about there not being a lot of bass. And I feel like Tin Hi-Fi has kind of been exploring this range, trying to inject more bass into their earphones while maintaining that kind of bright, open vocal range that they've been known to, 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 to do well. And, and this seems to be their attempt at some sort of balance there. So what I like about this sound is, um, honestly, like it is a pretty big open sounding earphone, um, pretty decent layering, you know, again, despite the fact that it's got that pretty big mid bass and sub bass hump in there, uh, it doesn't really come across as, you know, especially bloated, never really comes across as muddy at all. Still very, very clear uh, with strong separation and in the instruments and pretty, pretty decent imaging. Not fantastic imaging, but honestly, pretty decent imaging. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, like I said, the, the you get that mid bass quantity that a lot of people want without necessarily getting that penalty of congestion, you know? Um, so that's, that's what I like about the sound here. What I maybe don't love about the sound here on the T5 is that the cost of getting that bass without the congestion, um, at least here with the T5 is, I find the treble in this to be a little bit aggressive. Now, it doesn't come across honestly in every song. Some music will sound perfectly fine here if a little bit contrasty, um, but some music will come across perfectly fine. Other music, let's say like I was listening to the Smashing Pumpkins Gish album, and a lot of the cymbal strikes and like hard drum hits, uh, sort of like the initial attack on drums and stuff like that can come across fairly harsh here. Uh, treble can come across a little splashy, um, and maybe not so much with Smashing Pumpkins, but with some other vocalists like Churches um, or even uh, The Cure, I find that that treble emphasis here on the T5 does make these things more prone to sibilance than typical. So generally, I would say that the, the listening experience here with the T5 is not like, it's, it's definitely on the aggressive side. It's very much an in-your-face sounding earphone, and it can be pretty... I don't know, it can be pretty fun sometimes, but it can, it just kind of always comes with the the threat of um, just a, a sharp or unwanted sharp treble hit kind of kind of poking you in the head. So that's kind of the general tune here of this earphone, what I like and what I don't like, but how does it compare to some other earphones? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the Tin Hi-Fi T4, which is the direct predecessor to the T5. And I alluded to it before, so I'll point it out. This is kind of like the typical shape of the T-Line, just these little small cylinders, so you can see how big a deviation here the T5 is. Um, but it's not just the shape that is a deviation. I think the tuning here on the T4 uh, is, is, I don't know. Again, this is kind of like a more extreme version here of the T4. The T4 I found to be kind of more of a bright, a somewhat bright, neutral, light V, which is a lot of qualifying terms. I don't know if that helps uh, explain it very well, but honestly, I find the, T, the T4 to be a pretty smooth, um, you know, despite it being somewhat forward in the upper mid range and lower treble, still a very smooth and easy to listen to earphone. Um, it's not necessarily very, well, it's definitely not very strong in terms of layering and separation. I do think the T5 does that better. Um, but I do find that, you know, the bass, despite there being less bass here on the T4, certainly as measured by a frequency response graph, and I think you'll also hear that 
uh, when it comes to mid bass hits, but I do find that the bass here is still actually a little bit better defined, um, possibly because it's more focused in the sub bass frequencies maybe, um, but it could also just be, you know, some other characteristic of the bass. So I think this thing has got slightly better bass and just a much smoother tonal presentation. Like I never, I never have to wince or like kind of, uh, uh, brace myself for the next sharp treble spike here with the T4, whereas here with the T5, I do sometimes. And for that, you do get bigger, I think a bigger stage and bigger separation here on the T5. But personally, I honestly would still probably rather listen to the T4. Uh, the T4 is just, it's a less intense, which, you know, intense can be fun sometimes. Um, but for a general all purpose earphone, I personally would pick the T4. Um, let's go ahead and pull in this one too. This is actually the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus, which uh, was another earphone that deviated away from Tin Hi-Fi's typical shape. Uh, and this is honestly one of the, the earphones that kind of first uh, really went into the direction of adding more bass. Um, so I think that bass quantities on these is fairly similar levels. Um, if you look at, them on, look at them on a frequency response graph, the T5 does graph as having more bass, but I think um, there, it also has more treble and upper mid-range, whereas this, the balance, I think allows the bass to kind of come across at a similar level. Um, they are both a little bit sharp in the lower treble. Uh, if you recall my review here of the T2 Plus, I did find this thing to be a little bit sibilant for my ear. Surprisingly, not a lot of other reviewers seem to mention that, so maybe it's just my ear, maybe it's just my set, but um, for me, I would find these things kind of both similarly sibilant. So similar bass, similar kind of lower treble, we'll call them issues, um, but a couple, of, a couple of big differences. So one, I think the tuning here on the T2 Plus um, is, closer to a neutral tune and it's still maybe a slightly v-shaped tune um, but it's closer to neutral and generally i find the mid-range on the t2 plus just a little bit more laid back quite a bit more laid back and more satisfying and and richer in general uh the t the t5 um it's just again it's really aggressive just kind of across the across the board and because of that the mid-range you get that upper mid-range vocal forwardness that's maybe not as pronounced here um, but the, the rest of the mid-range doesn't quite have the presence that it does here on the T2 Plus. The other big difference is going to be in price. So $130 here for the T5. The T2 Plus, I believe, is $60. Bucks. So there's that. Um, other things I wanted to compare this thing to, the, the T5. This is the new Moondrop Aria. This is actually an $80 IM, but... Um, I brought this one in, you know, I think the more direct comparison would probably be between the Starfield, the Moondrop Starfield, which is priced more similarly than this is, but I can't hear a difference really between this and the Starfield. So might as well talk about the Aria. In tuning, these things are actually pretty different. Um, the tuning here in the Aria is more, much more laid back, a, a warmer tune in general. Uh, and because of that, I think just Across the board, the Aria is a much smoother listen. You might say that this is a more boring listen, for sure. Um, and as someone who, you know, is not shy about having a little bit too much trouble, if that brings some excitement, um, frankly, I do find the, the Aria a little bit on the dull side. But in direct comparison here with the T5, yeah, you do get the bigger stage, um, stronger layering and more fun here on the T5. But again, for my personal preferences, it's just it's just a bit too much. So I would probably still actually go with the Aria, but you know, it, listen more to the differences and which appeals to you. And then the final IM that I will compare this to is the Fio FH3. This is, I believe, priced basically the exact same here as the Tin Hi-Fi T5. And the FH3, I guess, actually, unlike any of these other earphones that I brought up, this one's actually a hybrid. So the other ones are all single dynamic drivers, and I don't think I mentioned that about the T5, but this is a single dynamic driver. Whereas here with the FH3, you've got a hybrid. You've got a couple of balanced armatures as well as one dynamic driver handling the bass. And tuning differences, I would say that this is, the FH3, is much more mid-range focus with kind of a, an awesome sub-bass trick. Uh, it's just got 
really, really satisfying sub bass. Whereas, you know, on certain music, the T5 might actually come across as the bassier set because a lot of music really doesn't play into that, those sub bass frequencies. And frankly, I think that's why a lot of people trying to push more bass into their earphones and headphones is because their music just doesn't have that much bass. For music that doesn't have a lot of bass, the T5 might actually come across as a bassier set, but for music with really nice sub-bass layering, I do think that the FH3 does the low end better. Apart from that, you know, I think the treble on the FH3 is maybe not the, it's maybe not the most refined, but I never really have any issues with sibilance or, you know, feeling, I don't, that, that brace for impact feeling that I do get here with the T5. So that's kind of the general tune. Again, you get the more mid-range focus with much more of a sub-bass focus here on the FH3, whereas here you get kind of just a more aggressive um, mid-bass treble uh, thing here with the Tin T5. And I think that's gonna bring me into my conclusion of the Tin Hi-Fi T5. Out of five stars, I'm gonna go ahead and give this earphone a solid three stars. I think it's not a bad earphone, but it's an interesting deviation from Tin Hi-Fi, and frankly, I think that their last earphone, the T4, actually does it better. That said, there's some reasons why you might like this better. You might like the fit. You might like the more aggressive in-your-face sound. For me, however, it's just a bit too much. So if you're interested in checking this thing out, of course, I got links in the description down below, and shout out to Linsoul Audio for providing this earphone for review. If you're, while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. It helps me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And then ding that YouTube bell so that we can have a conversation like I'm about to have with the folks that are here right now. But if you're not here right now, well, I'll catch you on the next Super Review. All right, folks, let me catch up with live chat as best as I can. How are we doing? It's Friday. Zaid, how's it going? Transients now, how we doing? He hate me. Nice reference to the XFL. Um, saying reviewers have not been kind to the T5. I think I'm gonna skip it. Uh, yeah, I now I'm certainly not the first person to review the Tin Hi-Fi T5, and I've avoided I've avoided reading and watching any reviews of the Tin Hi-Fi T5, but I'm definitely caught on, uh, especially over Discord, that people seem to not be super into this earphone. And I think it's gonna be that treble presence, which if you look at it on a frequency response graph is kind of gonna stand out. And I wanted to try and do my best to put that in the back of my, like not put that in the back of my head, put it out of my head. Um, try to as best as possible, forget the frequency response graph and just listen to the earphone. And there are certain things that the T5 doesn't do too bad. Like it's really strong on clarity. Uh, again, it gives you a big, fairly big staging, just open sounding earphone, or yeah, just an open sounding sound um, that works with a lot of music. And with some music, honestly, that lower treble doesn't even rear its ugly head in. Um, but it is, I did find myself just kind of like constantly on edge and waiting for uh, an errant treble spike to, to, to pop in and just make me go, mm, mm. And that's never, that's never the most pleasant. So. I, I, I take it that's probably what most reviewers are talking about. That said, like, I know, I know that sort of narratives around these things can get really one-sided and it's like people are super hyped for something or really super down on something. And I don't think this is a bad earphone. I just think it's not as good as the T4. David K, how's it going? Ishan asking, should I buy the T2 Plus or the T3? Uh, that really would depend on what you want out of them. They're, they're pretty different tunes. So the T3, and it's been a while since I listened to it, uh, the T3 is more of a, a bright neutral tune. Um, you're not gonna get a lot of bass out of that, but it's got, I mean, it's got a decent amount of bass, bass punch to it, but really not a lot. Whereas the T2 Plus has got a pretty nice mid bass into sub bass um, kind of this wideband boost that is pretty satisfying, gives it, I think, a little bit more depth, maybe a little bit less detail in like the mid-range and vocals and stuff like that versus the T3. Um, 
I don't know. I would have to go back and listen to those things back to back to figure out which one I prefer. I think I personally have more issues with the sibilance on the T2 Plus. Uh, so I'd probably, because of that, go with the T3. But again, I've surprisingly not many people mentioned having issues with that on the T2 Plus. So maybe it's just a me thing. And David K, so you're, you're saying that the T2 Plus exceeded your expectations. Yeah, I know a lot of people really love that. And I, I think the tuning on the T2 Plus is pretty awesome. Cam G, you just popped in and said disappointed. Disappointed in what? Cool Asian bro saying, if I'm looking to upgrade from a T2 Pro, should I get the T5, the T4, or the T3? Highs are really important to me. So if you like the T2 Pro, and I'll be honest, I actually, I enjoyed my Tin Hi-Fi T2 Pro once I applied uh, comply tips that dampened the treble a little bit. If you like the T2 Pro, I don't think any of the earphone, any of the other T earphones have that same treble presence. Um, I don't think you're gonna get anything out of an upgrade to the T3. I found the T3 and the T2 Pro um, pretty hard to distinguish for myself, especially once I had the, the T2 Pro with the comply tips. Um, I mean, the T5 is gonna give you the most treble emphasis out of those, if that's what you're looking for. Um, but if you're looking for really nice treble, in that price range, what would I what would I advise? Hmm. That's interesting. Treble emphasis around 100, 100, maybe 150 bucks. I mean, I think if you could stretch it, I would go with the Tonsch Jimhana. It's a little bit more expensive than the ones that you listed, but uh, I don't really have any reservations with recommending that one. Chick Tomas, how's it going? Glad to see you back. MK saying, I love your laid back reviews, but the background music is such a huge turnoff. Any chance of you changing it? I can actually. Um, let, me, let me play around with my setup. I'm actually thinking about completely changing my setup, moving my desk to that wall, and then starting to do my reviews just from my desk. As part of that switch, I'm going to be playing around with my OBS settings and stuff like that. Let me let me let me throw that into consideration, because um, you're not the first person to mention that. Rio asking, did Sennheiser send me the latest IE900? No, they have not sent that to me for review. I've asked about it, but I do not. I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with it, the IE, so I recently reviewed the Sennheiser IE300, uh, which is a $300 single dynamic driver earphone from Sennheiser uh, with a very prominent, I would describe V-shaped tuning. Um, pretty relaxed vocals, a lot of bass, and a fair amount of treble energy. They just earlier this week announced and maybe released the IE900, which is looks like it's almost the exact same shape, although it's all milled out of aluminum. It looks really pretty handsome. Uh, and it looks like the frequency response on the IE900 is very similar to what we got with the IE300. Um, I assume there's gonna be some other differences in terms of how the sound is presented, uh, but just purely on frequency response, they look, they look actually pretty similar. Um, but the other big standout point to make about the IE900 is the price. So the IE300, not cheap, but uh, it was a $300 earphone. The IE900, you might be thinking that's a $900 earphone. And that would be, that would be crazy, but no, I think it's actually a $1,500 earphone. Maybe it was $1,200, I don't know. It was over $1,000. All right, David K and Zaid, you're asking me not to change the bureaucratic music. What if I find like some sort of happy medium? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. I'm taking the feedback and, I, and I'm, I'm processing and trying to figure out what's the what's the best the best route for me. 
transient snail, saying if it's between the T5, the T4, and the T3, then the T4 seems to be the one that gets recommended the most. Yeah, I think I would probably rank them T4, T3, T5. Again, it's been a while since I heard the T3, so I don't know, maybe my opinion would change. I think the T3 and the T2 Pro, maybe a little bit stronger on like vocal clarity and detail than the T4. The T4 is a little bit on the boring side, a little bit two dimensional, um, but I actually was pretty, you know, it's been a while since I listened to the T4 as well until I was doing this review. And honestly, I was pretty pleasantly surprised. It's still a pretty satisfying earphone. Doesn't really do much wrong, except just be maybe a little bit boring. Cam G asking P1 revisit. I have actually listened to the P1 again recently. Um, I still really like my P1, to be honest. O'Neill Barnes asking, does the Tin T5 work well with EQ? I did not try EQing it. Uh, I mean, I imagine it would, I imagine you could do a lot with EQ, uh, but I personally, I just don't EQ a lot. And then uh, Ishan, you, you follow up with another question, which is, I think is actually a good question, is what does sibilance mean when I talk about the T2 Plus? Um, so sibilance, even as I say the word sibilance, I don't know if this microphone is picking it up, um, but basically in S sounds and a lot of times with T sounds, kind of like hard consonant sounds in human vocals, um, depending on how it's recorded, and an individual's voice, you can tend to pick up this kind of this harshness or like this this like resonance um, that you know if, if I say the word sibilance like overemphasize this and sibilance um, I don't know if that's coming I don't know what my recording setup sounds like with that word but uh, I do know that a lot of music has just has this harshness built into it so if you want a very good example check out church's uh, song called graffiti and the first like the entire first verse is a series of words that, that start with these kind of harsh consonants you know again s's and t's especially that just generate this this harshness in them um, and some earphones they do a good job of playing it down and you know, even though it's in the recording, some earphones will just kind of like sail right through it and not be harsh at all. Whereas other earphones will play it up a little bit more so than others. And then, you know, with some earphones, I just kind of expect that song, especially in some others, um, I expect to hear some sibilance. And so I don't, when I hear it, I don't think, all right, well, that's a sibilant earphone. I expect to hear it with certain music but it's kind of the degree to which an earphone or a headphone emphasizes it that will make me say that this earphone I find sibilant and the T5 I found doesn't do a great job with that track if you want to test it. Cam G saying disappointed at the T5. I was expecting a refined T4, possibly a hybrid hybrid with the same shape. Yeah, I, you know, I would love for IEM manufacturers, sort of like the people behind the voicing of them, uh, to maybe be a little bit more open and, and forward as people. Like I would love to know is there a person at Tin Hi-Fi that has a sound in mind, that they have a thing that they're trying to achieve with the tuning of their earphones? Um, I mean, if I were to kind of infer it based on the earphones that they've released, I, f I would guess that Tin Hi-Fi's, whoever's voicing their earphones, likes you know some treble, some, some treble emphasis above what you get in most other earphones. And, and I can honestly relate to that. Like I, I really quite like the T2, the T2 Pro with the comply tips uh, and the T3, which have that treble emphasis. And even the P1, it doesn't have as much of that lower treble emphasis, but it's got a really surprising amount of upper treble emphasis uh, with a generally kind of a, a neutral tune. So that seems to be what Tin Hi-Fi is, is after, is a neutral-ish tune with maybe a slightly spicy treble. Um, 
The T4 was a, very, a, a, pretty, a pretty strong deviation from that, where it goes for a more kind of traditional tune. The T2 Plus was another deviation towards a little bit more of a warmer, bassier sound. Uh, and then here with the, the the T5, it seems like maybe they're trying to merge the two the two different directions. Like maybe there's the T5, the the Tin Hi-Fi house sound, which is neutral treble, and then maybe there's what the community is asking for, which is they just keep pestering them for more bass. Which I can imagine. I would love again. I would love to hear more from the folks that are actually behind these tuning decisions. Like, what is the feedback that they're responding to? But I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate if Tin Hi-Fi went back to their roots and just go with somewhat bright, neutral sounding tunes. And Kamji, you're asking, is the P1 still worth it in 2021? Um, I mean, I think the P1. So it would it cost around $160 or something like that. So it's got some pretty stiff competition. Uh, in that price range, I personally, like if I was just going for one earphone, I would probably pick the Tonsh Jimhana. Um, but the P1 still has a place, I think. I think the mid-range on the P1 is actually pretty nice. Uh, and that upper treble emphasis, that extended treble, is pretty unique for the P1, especially in that price range. I can't think of anything, really. Uh, maybe the next, the next price bump up that I think has similarly well extended treble would be something like the Prisma Azul at around 300 bucks. Rob Hawk asking, which do I prefer the, the unique melody MEST or the U12T? I don't know which one I prefer because I haven't heard the MEST. Uh, I think the U12T is pretty phenomenal, but I've heard the MEST is as well, but I haven't heard it for myself. O'Neill Barnes, you're saying the T5 with complied tips should make a difference. You know what? I will go ahead and measure that difference. Um, for those that aren't familiar, I have a website, squig.link, S-Q-U-I-G dot link, um, where I measure all my earphones and it's a, it's a graph-based uh, interface that you can use to compare the frequency response of different earphones. And I've got the Tin Hi-Fi T5 up there, just measured with the stock ear tips that I showed here. But I can, I should, I'll go ahead and throw on a pair of complies, the ones that I use on my T2, uh, and, and see what that does to the frequency response. Because I do also have a measurement of my T2 Pro with and without the comply tips. And you can see that it makes a pretty significant difference in that sort of like seven to seven to nine K region, which is where I associate sibilant sounds with. Um, I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case, but just based on my experience, that seems to be what does it. Oh, MK, you're an audio engineer. I don't know, any other suggestions for how to improve my audio? I don't. I know I don't have like a phenomenal setup here, um, but I do have, you know, most of my walls, pretty much all my walls in this room are treated in some way. Uh, this wall in front of me has got these white uh, acoustic panels on it. This wall over here to my right has some white acoustic panels. The wall behind me obviously has this soft touch uh, mural of sorts on it. And then this wall is all covered in like shelves and stuff. Um, this microphone is a pretty simple giant squid audio lavalier microphone. It's not expensive, 50 bucks. But then I do inside of OBS have a couple of filters on it, I forget exactly what they are. I think a denoiser and maybe a de-esser. Maybe a compressor, actually. Sav asking, did I compare T5 with the Starfield or the Star C? So I didn't, I haven't, I, first of all, I haven't heard the Star C, uh, but I did talk about the Tin T5 versus the Moondrop Aria. If you missed it earlier in the review, you can rewind and check that out. And the Aria is basically the same as the Starfield. Muhammad Rabi, no, I have not heard the HZ Sound Heart Mirror. Interesting, you're saying it's up my alley. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should check it out. 
Randy Leahy, how's it going? Thanks for staying up late to watch. Cam G, I, that's a very good, um, a very good point on uh, for testing sibilants. You pointed out Freddie Mercury, king of sibilants. So Freddie Mercury, singer of Queen, um, one of my favorite rock bands of all time. Like they've got just some phenomenal, phenomenal albums, phenomenal songs, and Freddie Mercury is ridiculous. Um, but he's, his vocals are pretty sibilant. So if you want a good example of sibilants in music, uh, what's a, like another one bites the dust, I think is a fairly, a fairly common popular example. You can check that one out. Uh, I've also got, I think my album, um, Hot Space, the, that one, I, I don't know if it's the mastering on that or what, but that one seems to be especially sibilant too. So yeah, good call. Freddie Mercury is a pretty good example. If you want to know what sibilance is, uh, when you hear people talk about sibilance in audio, listen to some Freddie Mercury stuff. And every time he says an S sound, that's probably sibilance. How are you? Imran, is the Moondrop Aria any good? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I did a review of it. Check it out. Uh, insane Zombie Man, I haven't heard the F the file FH1S, so I don't have any thoughts on that. Martin Ferreira, yes, the review is over, sorry. So Creamy's asking, will I be reviewing the Thea Audio Oracle? Um, I hope so, I'm interested in it. So uh, I guess I'll follow, I'm actually, just because I finished this review, I'm gonna follow up with Linsoul. Uh, and see if they're interested in providing the Oracle for review. Cause I know, um, what is that? Probably around 500, 550 bucks for a Tribrid IM. Um, seems to be getting some pretty, pop some pretty positive reviews so far. Uh, and I'm definitely interested in hearing it. You asked the question, will it be a cheaper, uh, a cheaper Monarch? And I, I don't know about that. I feel like the Monarch, it's got that, that it's got that sub base kick it's got that sub bass injection which is just kind of unworldly uh, and if that's what you want i have a feeling you might still need to get the monarch but uh, it's possible that the oracle is uh, maybe a tamer version of it for less oh ishan asking can i recommend some good music to listen to i can recommend a lot of music um, maybe the first thing I'll point out is that if you go to my YouTube channel and go to the playlists section, there should be a playlist section just called reference music. And that's a lot of music that I like to use to listen to when evaluating uh, audio equipment. So, um, some good examples of what, what have I been listening to a lot lately? Uh, Men I Trust is a, a, an artist I've been listening to a lot lately. Um, Smashing Pumpkins, a Kish album I've been listening to a lot lately. Uh, Drab Majesty, I've been listening to. Cigarettes After Sex, pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of really good different music. Um, in another place, if you want some good audio or good music recommendations, is our Discord server. So if you'll check in the description down below, there is a link to my Discord server where we've got a bunch of fellow audio nerds that love to talk about audio, love to recommend music. Uh, Kyan asking, how different are the T5 and the P1 in terms of characteristics of sound? I think they're pretty significantly different. The, the T5, like I mentioned, is a, is a pretty aggressive tune. It's bright and aggressive. Um, very strongly V-shaped sound signature. So not so much about the mid-range, although the vocals do come forward pretty clearly. Um, it's just a very contrasty sound, whereas the Tin Hi-Fi P1 is a surprisingly flat neutral tune um, with just like this upper treble emphasis that gives it enough contrast to really ever prevent it from sounding boring. So I find the P1 is gonna be a more warm laid back tune. Um, and this is just just talking about tonality. Uh, apart from just purely tonality, there's 
there's some other differences. Like I think the, the T5 probably gives you like a bigger sense of sound stage, um, but I think detail and stuff will probably come through a little bit better on the P1. Mason Bauer asking, any earphones come to mind with, with elevated upper treble, but for someone sensitive to upper mids and lower treble? Well, we were just talking about the Tin Hi-Fi P1. That's actually, that's actually a pretty good match for exactly what you're asking about. The P1 does not have a lot of upper treble emphasis, or sorry, um, upper mid-range emphasis, right? Whereas you look at most earphones and kind of like following the Harman target or even the diffuse field target, etymotic target, et cetera, um, you're gonna get fairly prominent emphasis in the upper mid-range where vocals kind of live. Uh, the P1 is actually fairly relaxed in that region. Um, and then in the lower treble, I find the P1 actually dips a little bit. Um, might come at the expense of, I don't know, some sense of presence, but I, I honestly don't really hear it. So I, it's just, it's never fatiguing for me in that lower treble, but you do get that upper treble zing to it that might be exactly what you're looking for. I would check out a frequency response of that and see if that's what you're looking for. Um, and I do have that one graphed on squig.link. Okay, MK, thanks for the comments on the, on the audio. Cool. At least I'm doing the, the microphone bit well enough. You know, honestly, part of, part of why I have the background music in there it's a couple of things. Um, one, I find I, I'm, I'm just kind of, I tend to be a bit of a slow talker and, and maybe the, the downtime I feel like I need to fill with some sort of sound. So maybe there, there's that. But I think also part of it was that um, my, I know my audio setup is not like phenomenal. And I don't have like a super black background. I'm not speaking into uh, like a production quality microphone. And so I use that, that noise bed or that, that music bed to just kind of mask any, any, you know, maybe high frequency, but low volume uh, inconsistencies in the audio. Kennedy's asking any over the ear headphones you guys recommend for music production at 50 to 100 or 100 to, so I don't, I mean, I'll say I don't do any music production, so take my recommendations with a grain of salt. Um, but I think if your price range includes up to 200 bucks, I would take a serious look at the uh, Sennheiser HD 58X and take a serious look at my video where I talked about modifying the 58X because I think the 58X with the T-Bag mod, that's, that's probably my favorite headphone under 200 bucks. Martin Ferreira saying you read a critical article about terminology used in reviews and how sound signatures work and how everything is more clear to me. Yeah, I think critical does a really good job of teaching this stuff. So if you want to check out his website, critical.com, uh, I'm not sure exactly where you would find it. He's got some links in the header and stuff like that, but uh, he's got some, he's got some pretty good, uh, he, you know, publishes a lot of reviews and opinion stuff uh, or like, yeah, evalu evaluative content but I find that the, some of the content that he does that's not specifically about an, a, a particular earphone, whether it's how he measures things or um, how to read a frequency response, I find that stuff actually really valuable. O'Neill Barnes asking, does the T5 change with burn-in? Which is, that's a bit of a controversial subject. Um, I assume you know that, but maybe you don't. Burn-in as a topic, a lot of people don't believe in burn-in and a lot of people very strongly believe in burn-in. I, I would file myself into the, 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 the category of like burn-in agnostic. Um, I don't, I generally don't, I, I guess I don't believe in burn-in necessarily, but I'm saying, I, here's the way I'll say it. I am not denying the possibility that uh, an earphone or a headphone will sound different 
after being listened to for, let's say, a hundred hours. Um, I just haven't experienced it myself. And is that because, you know, some ear, I haven't heard the right earphones. Is it because I'm not listening for it? I don't know. I'm just going to say that look, there's a lot of, a lot of things that you can attribute. Um, let's say you listen to something one day and listen to it again a different day. And it's maybe it sounds different to you. There are a lot of things that you can attribute that to that aren't just burning. Um, and I am going to be more inclined to attribute it to those other things than I am going to be inclined to attribute it to burn in. That said, um, one of the next reviews I plan on doing is the file FH five S, which I have in the studio for, for review. I've been listening to it, but then I just saw recently there was some discussion about the, I guess some of the reviews that are coming out early are not super positive about it. And some people are saying you got to burn it in. And even FIO themselves came out with a recommendation to burn in the FH five S for 200 hours. So I don't think it's going to sound different after 200 hours of burning. That's my hypothesis, but I'm going to do it. I'm burning it in right now. As we speak, actually in a different room, the FH five S is burning in. I just have it playing music 24 hours a day. Uh, and after 200 hours, 200 hours, that's over a week of burning, um, just running 24 hours a day. But after 200 hours, I'm going to throw it on my measurement rig and I measured it before I'm going to measure it afterward. And we'll see if there is a measurable difference in the frequency response. Now I'm only measuring frequency response, which I will be the first to admit is only one way of measuring the sound of an earphone, but I don't expect there to be a difference. And if I'm perfectly honest, I don't expect that I will hear a difference. Now, maybe I'm going into this whole thing with a bias and I'm just going to confirm my own bias, but I'm at least doing the due diligence of running the burn in and I'm going to measure it the way that I know that I can. And if there's a difference, we'll talk about it in the review. And if there's not a difference, I'll probably mention that too, but I'm not going to beat up on, I'm not going to use that as like proof that burn in is never a thing but I might use it as evidence that burn in maybe is not a thing in that particular case, if it turns out that way, but we'll find out then. Rafat Chavar asking, can I suggest an earphone for the gym? Um, I mean, for me personally, I, I don't, I guess I don't go to the gym. Um, but when I do exercise either in my garage or out in the wild, this is what I like to wear, which is bone, bone conduction, um, sound quality, pretty, but honestly, uh, these things don't sound great, at least with music, uh, but I primarily use them for podcasts and these things are phenomenal. If you need to listen to music, these can do it. Um, and they're not terrible. I do call them, but, um, they sound like music, but they're not going to, they're not going to sound as good as any of the earphones that we just talked about earlier today for workout. I would probably just honestly go with something like the AirPods pro something like wireless and sounds good enough and is going to stay in your ear. Well, and the AirPods pro do that at least for me. Uh, Wasim, I see you're asking about the rating for the T5, the T5, 10 Hi-Fi T5. I gave three stars out of five. It's not bad, but it's not my favorite. MK, I would like to talk with you a bit more about what you could do with the audio of the channel. If you're all interested, hit me up. Okay. I'll check out that, uh, that email address afterward. AKA spooky just saying just ordered a Modius and Magnus. Those are a shit DAC and amp combination. What headphone to for 250 ish dollars would be recommended? Um, if you can get a hold of one, I would recommend, I mean, my favorite headphone 
around that price is the Sennheiser HD 600. It's gonna cost a little bit more than 250, probably, but I don't know, maybe you can find it around that price. If you don't wanna to stretch to the HD 600, you can't find it for the price you want. Um, I honestly think that probably my next favorite headphone below that price would be the Sennheiser HD 58X with the T-Bag mod. And that one's only like 170 bucks. Ash K, thanks for watching. Precog, how's it going? This thing, yeah. So Precog Vision, another reviewer, I believe, I believe Precog has also got the Tin Hi Fi T5. And yes, we are talking about Vernon. Ishan, you're saying Vernon is a myth, right? And and I, again, I'm gonna can, I'm gonna call myself a Vernon agnostic. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying I have not personally experienced it, and. I am not going to use it as an explanation. I'm unlikely to use it as an explanation for um, audio uh, differences or whatever that I hear, phenomenon. Randy Leahy saying you were talking about burning in. For me, it just depends on the driver. Some will change a bit and some not. And it's only a thing with DD. Yeah, I know that is kind of the common wisdom around burn in is that it's more of a thing for dynamic drivers and less of a thing for, uh, let's say, balanced armatures. Again, I haven't experienced it myself, so I, I don't have the personal experience to uh, attribute it to one driver technology or another. Um, but I do know that, that is, I guess, the common, the common wisdom around it. The other thing that I think makes a much bigger difference than burn-in is going to be things like, you know, which tips are you wearing on your earphone? Or if you're wearing a headphone, how old are the ear pads? Because how compressed the ear pads are, like how soft they become over time, that can make a very, very real difference in the sound of a headphone. Um, and to the point that you can actually measure that pretty easily with a frequency response. Um, so that can make a real difference. I think also, you know, your mood can make a big difference. What volume you're listening to can make a big difference. And maybe one day to the next, you might not even realize it that you're listening at a different volume level. Um, Cause just kind of how you go about your day, how loud your life was before you started listening to something will affect you know, at what volume you start listening to music, right? If you were to spend a day out in the city and it's loud and there's a lot of noises and you go home and start listening to music, there's a good chance you'll actually inadvertently just start listening to it louder, louder, more loudly than if you were to sit around at home, you know, wake up in the morning, sit around at home all day and then start listening to music at the same time of day. Um, just kind of how at least my ears work and I think that's, I think that's pretty common. Martine saying the SSRs are not even here yet and you already want the 10 Hi-Fi T3 or the T4, but it's taking so long. Patience. Um, I, I think I kind of like the SSRs better than both of them though, if I'm honest. Uh, Ishan's asking, um, what difference do soft and hard ear tips make? You know, there's a chance that soft and hard ear tips will make a difference in the frequency response and you could probably measure that. Um, I don't know that I've, I mean, I've definitely noticed a difference in frequency response as I switch tips. It's not a major difference, but you can notice some differences. I haven't really attributed it to the hardness of the ear tip because there's usually so many other differences as well. There's hardness, there's shape, there's bore size, there's length. A lot of different things about a tip can affect the sound. For me, the bigger difference that I will notice, like the more obvious difference that I'll notice from a soft tip to a hard tip is either comfort or more specifically, like how grippy 
the ear tip is in my ear. I find that softer tips um, with maybe a, a more tacky silicone will grip my ear better and give me a more consistent seal, whereas a hard tip might not seal as well. And if you're breaking seal, like one, you might notice it pretty obviously, um, but you might not notice it. It might be a subtle enough thing that you've broken seal enough that base leaks out and it's not like this thing that's gonna get on the ground and make a mess or anything like that, uh, but it's just, you'll hear less of it. Um, so I would say, uh, generally I prefer a softer ear tip because I just get a better seal and a more secure fit, but not so much because of the effects on sound. Mocha Rain asking any recommended places to get high definition music. And Precog, I see you recommended Kobas. It seems like, so this is actually gonna be an interesting thing. Spotify recently announced that they were going to be moving toward a lossless tier of audio music, or audio streaming. Um, and it might be the case that, I don't know, like Amazon did that uh, maybe two years ago, they switched to, or they offer uh, an HD lossless music streaming service. Spotify does it, they've, you know, they've certainly got a pretty big library and that's gonna make a big, you know, that's gonna make it a, a, a more utilitarian thing than something like Amazon, which might have a more limited library. Um, and then now there's rumors that Apple's gonna be doing something similar. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if Spotify makes a big deal of this, I feel like all of the streaming services are going to follow suit because high definition audio, like if we're going just lossless CD quality audio, Going from MP3 to that in terms of bandwidth costs for uh, a streaming provider like this, it's, I feel like it's not gonna be so significant that it's gonna be that costly. Like it's gonna be a relatively free, I mean, it's gonna cost them something, but it's gonna be basically a free upgrade to sound that all these providers can start touting. Um, you know, it's kind of like the change when, uh, I'm not gonna go down that route and talk about HD video and how we got robbed of resolution. But anyway, um, I feel like the switch to lossless audio for these streaming providers, as soon as one of them starts making a big deal of it, and I'm, you know, Tidal never became big enough that I think the other, the other manufacturers or the other uh, music streamers got too worried or decided needed to make a big deal about it. Seems like title is still kind of a niche thing, but if Spotify makes a big deal of it, I expect kind of everyone to go that direction because it's probably not that expensive in terms of the additional streaming bandwidth, certainly not, you know, versus streaming video. Um, yeah, now it's gonna be interesting to see, does that push for higher quality streaming in the more mainstream market, will that leak into more interest in, you know, earphones and headphones that can actually hear the differences. Because let's be honest, if you're listening on the Sony XM3s or Bose NC700s, or even the AirPods, you're probably not gonna hear the difference between an MP3 and a, a lossless stream. You're, you're just really not. Uh, and then I guess another way to answer that question too is what I do currently, how I get my music, is either on Bandcamp or I buy CDs and I rip them. David K is asking the, 58, the Sennheiser 58X versus the Philips 9500. Uh, I haven't heard the, the 9500, so I don't know. Um, what I do know about it is that it, I'm pretty sure the, the 9500 is gonna be more of a treble forward headphone versus the 58X is in stock form maybe somewhat v-shaped like it's got some mid bass emphasis that i find a little bit too warm a little bit too thick slightly on the muddy side but with the teabag mod really brings that to just be a really nice mid-range so um without having heard the 9500 it's hard for me to say for certain but i'm pretty sure i would pick the 58x Wasim Abbas asking, would that not be a good idea to measure the frequency response before and after burn-in to see if any change occurs? So that's what I'm going to do with the 5HS. 
the, the FH5S, sorry, the FIO FH5S. I'm, I've, I, rec I measured the frequency response immediately out of the box before I even listened to it. And now I'm burning it in for 200 hours and I'm gonna measure it again after that. I don't expect to see a difference, but I also don't want to overstate what that evidence says, right? Let's, let's say, let's just say for the sake of argument, and again, I don't know this for sure. Let's say for the sake of argument, after 200 hours of burn-in, I measure it and it measures exactly the same that it did before in terms of frequency response. That just tells us the frequency response didn't change. There are other aspects of sound and very possibly something else changed and I'm just not measuring it. I don't think so, but it's very possible. Wizard, I have not heard the Soundcore Bluetooth headphones, so I'm not sure. I know Olive is a big fan of those though. Transient Snail saying, I need to buy another pair of SSR. You gave yours away and you kind of regret it after listening to them again. I think they're, you know, the tuning is definitely not for everyone on the SSR. I get it, but it's still a really satisfying earphone to listen to. One of my favorite, one of my favorite budget options for sure. I'd say it's honestly probably one of my favorite earphones under 200 bucks. Mocha Rain, would you do a guide on how to organize music and methods of transferring it to different devices? Um, I don't know if I would do anything that specific. I mean, I did my videos. I've done a couple of different videos where I talk about how I transfer music um, via Google Drive to my Walkman and my other Android phones. So, I mean, I've done that in that context and it's honestly not any different for any other DAP that I've used that has Android. Um, how I transfer music to a non-Android device is not that interesting. I just drag and drop it. Um, I don't know if I ever get any, if I, if I ever get to a more interesting solution uh, for the drag and drop, maybe I'd do something about that because the drag and drop has its flaws, right? I gotta like remember which which of my music is new and only drag that stuff over, or I gotta wipe the memory card entirely and then just drag over my library all in one bunch, which can take a really long time. And that's the problem I would like to solve. So if I ever solved that problem, maybe I would do a video about that. But for Android devices, it's, it's, it's DriveSync. That's what I use. Ahmed, you're asking about IEMs or headphones at the same price range. Uh, again, it's, it's hard to make super strong generalizations, but I think Generally, I prefer open back headphones to IMs, and I prefer IMs to closed back headphones. The block I have not tried, the HEX4. Insane Zombie Man, are there any good sub $100 non chi fi IMs? Yes, there are. Um, well, one, the Edemotic ER2 XR is now very easily found for under $100, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, that is a phenomenal sounding earphone. And I guess it doesn't qualify as Chi-Fi, so there you go. There's also, you know, Final Audio has a couple of different earphones. They're a Japanese company. Um, I think probably my favorite Final is actually the cheapest one I've heard, which is the E500. It's like 25 bucks. That's pretty good. And then saying, I see you followed up with the Sennheiser IE40 and the Shure SE215. I don't recommend the Shure SE215. I don't like the way that that thing sounds. Um, the IE40 is not bad, but I would still pick, I would pick the E500 and the Edemotic ER2XR over those pretty easily. David, David KSU uh, calling out MP3 tag is a, a, an application. It's a Windows application that lets you manage 
um, the, the ID3 tags on your music files. I think it is very, very important to have a good habit of uh, making sure your ID3 tags are in order and organized well, that you have some sort of system for making sure before an album gets from, you downloaded it from the internet, you downloaded it from Bandcamp, you ripped it, before it gets from there to your library, make sure those ID3 tags are in a good spot. And don't put it off for later because that kind of stuff can just get really out of hand if you ignore it for a long time and then you're never gonna wanna do it. I guess I'm speaking from experience. Jura Hogjin, good night, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Derek Crocker, are these IMs better than the Moondrop Arias? Well, I talked about that. I made that comparison between the T5 and the Aria in my review. I would rewind it if you want more detail on the comparison, but they're pretty different. I think some people might actually prefer the T5. For me, I would pick the Arias though. And Cam G, I'm not planning on reviewing the A4000. I actually borrowed it from Precog for way too long and I had a hard time motivating myself to listen to it. I didn't love it. Um, Precog, you're saying you would take the SSR to be honest, yeah. And yes, SE215 is yikes. Yeah, SE215, the sure SE215. Um, it's just bassy and muddy and thick and like, congested and kind of all the worst words that you could use to describe uh, a, an earphone, in my opinion. It's not great. Mocarine, what's my favorite semi-custom IEM design? Probably the Moondrop S8. Eh, well, maybe that's not totally fair. The S8 I think is beautiful um, and it fits me phenomenally, but if I'm being perfectly honest, I think the SA6 is the one that actually fits me the best. It's pretty good. And Ahmed, yes, I saw that Tanch Jim has a, an, an IEM under a cheap IEM. It's the Tanya, I believe is what it's called. I actually ordered one, so I should have it here fairly soon. Ed Penrose saying the final audio E500 was your first drop purchase and you still rock them. Yeah, the, the E500, it is maybe not the most exciting sounding earphone, but it's just kind of like a nice laid back, warm, neutral, with a decent little bit of mid, mid bass to it. Um, just a pretty pleasant sounding earphone with surprisingly decent imaging chops. Not fantastic, but it's like a $25 ear, earphone. The other thing that's kind of stand out about the final E500 is, well, okay, it's 25 bucks and you get an earphone, but you also get a full set of finals, really phenomenal E-type ear tips, which alone could cost you about 20, 25 bucks. So you kind of get a set of ear tips with a free earphone and it's actually a pretty decent earphone. I think the worst thing I could say about the E500 is the cable. I don't like it, but And Zombie Man, you, so you just mentioned, you, you've heard that final audio are very bass heavy. Not true of the E500. The E500 I would describe as a laid back neutral. Kurt Angelo with the big question, the burning question, what's the best $100 earphones? Uh, it's gonna be the Edemotic ER2XR. If, you can find it for that price. And I've seen it, at least here in the US, you can get it pretty regularly for a hundred bucks or less. I, I don't think you can beat it. ASR ads, hey, how's it going? I think that's gonna do it though for the stream. Um, thank you all for tuning in and for the questions and the conversation. As always, I appreciate it. Uh, if you wanna continue the conversation, I do have a link to my Discord server in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please mash that like button, just straight up smash it and destroy it or just click it gently, that's fine too. 
Um, helps out the channel, helps other people find me. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, etc. And then I'll see you in the next Super Review. Until then, have a good weekend.